this is where I have my, this is in the bathroom, where I have my, my workout log and my weight log. <laughs> I write these down. Sometimes I go back and look at them. You know, if I'm doing a similar event, I want to see, you know, what weight I was or what, uh, or what, uh, what workouts I was doing. But anyway, so yesterday I did my three workouts. So my goal over here is 198 pounds. And I woke up this morning after the three workouts, got in late yesterday, last night, uh, 202.6. And so I gotta get, remember, one, 198 and change. Uh, and last week when I made weight, I was 205.6. So I actually lost you know, I got down to 199, so I lost six pounds in these two days, but I started fasting about four o'clock. I'll probably do the same. I just, I can't take a chance. So I'll probably do the same. All right, so you uh, got to look at that, my schedule in there. I, I got to look at it. I like looking at it. So last week I lost five pounds between Thursday and Friday on my whatever you can, whatever it takes diet. <laughs> Soon to be on your shelves in your bookstore. <laughs> Next to one of Oprah's books. <laughs> anyway, so I uh, I feel good. I'm a pound, I have a pound less. I have to lose four pounds. And uh, that's a pound less than, than last week. But I'll probably follow the same regimen. I just don't want to screw around. And if I, if I get down lighter, great. Uh, but and I'm getting used to it. I'm I'm kind of in the groove on this. This you know it's, this will be my my fourth week of uh, of fasting on Friday and uh, fasting excuse me fasting on Thursday to make weight on Friday and fasting you know Wednesday night starting you know maybe four o'clock. So I kind of like the challenge of it. I mean food's always been a tough thing for me to beat. I mean a really tough thing for me to beat just because of the you know, the emotions that you can get sucked into food and, uh, you know, how it makes you comfort you and all that crazy stuff. It's really hard for me to, you people go, it's just fuel. Just look at his fuel. I go, it's not that easy. <laughs> Sounds easy, but it's not that easy. So anyway, so I'm going to, I'm going to, I have a, uh, today I'm going to go out for a 45 minute, uh, run walk. And then my, co my coach has me down for swimming and I asked her because my pool, last I checked, it was still closed. And I haven't heard from my Mark, my coach lately, so um, I'm assuming it's still closed. And so she had me down for a swim, but what, what I talked to her is I'll put a walk, power walk, you know, one of those try to hold 15 minute power walks in place of it. Uh, and then I have uh, yoga again today, so that'll be fun. So a walk, a run walk, and yoga. I love it. Full day. Yeah, I'm hoping, uh, hopefully today or the next in the next couple days, I'll get to talk to my, my running coach, the amazing Amanda McIntosh. I love her. And uh, because we do have the combination of these two running races in uh, northern Wisconsin and Minnesota, you know, 160 and 160 miles and 135 miles. Then two weeks later, I go down to South America to that's uh, mid February to climb uh, Mount An An Anacon Anacagua. Anacagua. I'll have it down by the time I get back, guaranteed. Anacagua. And uh, so I just want to, you know, we'll be that's a 40 pound pack climb, and it's it's a uh, it's two, 19 days or something like that uh, climb. No, maybe 16 or 17 days. I take that back. But it's a, it's a, de it's a, you know what I mean? It's, it's, that's a lot of time with a pack on your back. So I, uh, I definitely, even though I won't be wearing a pal pack at Tuscobia or Arrowhead, I need to get some, some pack work in because even, even if physically you're strong enough to carry a pack mentally you got to get used to it you got to used to having four and 40 pounds is on denali standards that's kind of on the light side because it can go as 40 50 60 70 on denali you can be as high as 70 on some of the climbs uh when you start doubling up your sled weight and your this weight but this 
Anacagua, so you don't have a sled there, and some of your weight is definitely going on a, a donkey or something. Probably feel like cheating, but I'll go, go, donkey, go. I don't care if it feels like cheating. I'm going to do it anyway. Hey, donkey, can you take a little more? <laughs> anyway, you can tell that's going to be a different trip. I'm really excited about it. Uh, but yeah, I want to be, you know, I want to just brainstorm with my coach, make sure she's uh, thinking that I'll be carrying that 40 pound pack for, you know, two and a half weeks and I'll be ready and I'll be ready for the other two because the other ones all of the, I'm going to have to get out on the beach pretty soon. That's my closest thing I have to snow here is I go out to the beach, which is just like 35 minutes away, which is pretty freaking awesome and uh and pull my sled there i pull a, a sled on the beach and go back and forth to kind of get used to pulling the sled so we'll have to do a comp we'll, we'll be working on a plan to do a combination of sled pulling and 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 carrying a pack you know up the mountains and uh so yeah that's another thing i just was uh, checked the map yesterday like the top third of the mountain over here did burn which is a freaking bummer man uh, but most of it on the side that everybody uses did not burn. Like two thirds of it didn't burn on this side, but the top third did. And if I start um, using the pack, I'll be, I'd be, I, I'll be going up that high. So it'll be uh, yeah, kind of sobering when I first start going up there. <laughs> I'm already, it's, it's surreal to all of us around here. This whole fire has been surreal. It's just like unbelievable. Uh, but it's reality and it happens to people, uh, you know, fires and hurricanes and na just natural disasters. They just happen, you know, so you deal with them, you figure out, you know, I, I like to, you know, just what can I do? What can I do? What can I do? What can I do? What's a solution? What's a solution? What's a solution? I like using that mentality in these type of situations. Anyway, on to the first workout. So in the background there, right across the street from me is a little Mexican restaurant that I've been going to. And I've done like these cheese enchilada binge days. So once a week, Friday's my binge day. And the last three weeks I've been going to this Lila's uh, Mexican restaurant. They got great cheese enchiladas right across the street from me. And I was wondering why, why am I going to this? Why do I keep getting cheese enchiladas for my binge day, especially since the last, you know, we've been dealing with this fire. And I thought to myself, I go, you know what it is? It's because it, it's comfort food. Because my mom made us cheese enchiladas when we were a kid. And so when this fire all started on my binge day, I go over <laughs> thinking about you, mom. I go across the street and have those cheese enchiladas, man. And it makes, it makes me feel comfortable, even with all the chaos going around with the fire and everything. So I, I love that little restaurant. <laughs> they know me really well now. I said, every Friday <laughs> until the fire's over. <laughs> but I do, oh, it's really good cheese enchiladas too. But yeah, definitely would comfort me and make me think about my mom, I guess. I just realized that just now. I go, why do I keep doing that? Same Friday binge dinner, and it's because of the fire and the comfort over there. Of eating cheese enchiladas and seeing my mom pulling them out of the oven when we were a kid. Not quite as good as mom's, but it's always that way, isn't it? Yeah, in case you were wondering, my mom has passed away. It's, it's been a while now. It's like 20-something years, but uh, I think about her all the time. All right. Halfway through my run, actually a little bit more. It's a 45 minute run walk this morning. I uh, came up on, uh, I'm, at, I'm at the start of Annadale Mountain. You can see it back behind me. And the firefighters, and I love them. I love them, I, you know, you don't really see them because they're way up there. We're in a little cocoon here down in Santa Rosa and they were doing everything they could to protect this town. And I'm so grateful for them and I'm so grateful that a big chunk of this mountain is still standing and not burnt to a crisp like was being my low was uh i don't know what that was man it's all a blur since this started but 
four or five days ago when it was supposed to be 65 mile an hour wind gusts at night and uh, they thought this thing was going to get way out of control again and uh, and they, well, I talked to the park guy here and he thought we were going to lose the park on this side and which is the part that 90% of the people use is on this side where it's on Santa Rosa side and uh, and it got uh, and we were they were able to hold it man it didn't I just <laughs> I told the guy I said it ain't happening it's not happening that wind is not gonna kick up that bad <laughs> I love telling this story so between me and 900 my my willing it not to come over that mountain and 900 firefighters the wind did not kick up as bad as they thought and we did not lose this side of the mountain and those firefighters have done an amazing job keeping it so up above that ridge there that you can probably see in the background I think the fire starts not that far from there so it did come over the ridge from the back side and then it uh, and they stopped it right above Lake El Sanjo which is a beautiful lake up there and I remember when I went up to the first time and maybe I already shared this story but uh, you know I just couldn't believe how beautiful it was and I made up my mind I was gonna move up here because it's like this little isolated valley you know in there in between all these trees and hills and this little lake you know that you could swim in it's legal to swim in it so it was like awesome we we did we would do triathlon runs up there and then swim you know it was just it's it's good stuff so that lake so right that's where kind of they held it at was at that lake which is that's a pretty good run from my house so uh it's you know probably you know an, an hour run from my house maybe to get to that so that's a two-hour run before I got to get into the fire uh, so anyway it's just uh, it's an amazing thing and I just kept telling myself how grateful I am that this park is still standing how great I'm so grateful I'm so grateful I'm so grateful I'm so grateful and I'm so grateful for all the firefighters and I watched a truckload come by the other day but they went by me and they they looked exhausted I'm not sure what type of shifts they're working but they looked exhausted Hey, I just wanted to tell you guys something real quick. So I, um, I just noticed like the last day or two that my, my, uh, you know, my, this thing on my phone, I carry Sprint, you know, which is supposed to have unlimited uh, data, and I love it. So I don't, I never got Wi-Fi at my place because I would just use Sprint, and it wasn't a big deal. Uh, I guess what I was doing until just recently, because I quit, I quit my job not that long ago. Uh, so I could focus full time on my training and the three the four things I work on is like you know I'm possessed with my eating now keeping my calories tight losing weight and then I'm uh, then I'm training three tr three workouts a day you know working on strength and and running and aerobic and uh, weights and uh, and and yoga for for flexibility and then I work on my mind like my mind and my spirit, you know, my spirit is like, because my purpose is that I'm supposed to motivate people. That's why I was put on this earth, to take on these crazy events and, and motivate people. You know, my goal is to finish them, which I will start doing now that I'm training full time. I'm convinced. I know 100% I will start finishing these. And motivate people. Tell them not to give up on their dreams. Go after their dreams. Go up on their goals. Whatever it takes, do it. But then the, fine, the, the other thing I need to, that I work on is my mind all the time I work on my mind I was just thinking about this my family when I went through the bankruptcy like 12 years ago they gave me this giant well whatever a big screen TV to me it was giant at the time a big screen TV I've never hooked it up ever I don't watch TV I mean I'll watch the Warriors or the Giants or you know uh, my sister has something on when I'm down picking up fairly I'll watch it for a little bit but I don't you know I don't watch it and so what I do do though is I'm possessed with watching the YouTube videos, the motivational YouTube videos. And I just press motivation, whatever. I sign up for, you know, when I first started doing it, you couldn't find them. And now they're like everywhere. And that's what I'm doing. That's what I do too. You know, I got my, my motivational clips I put on their short ones, you know, for in the morning. So I, so I watch all these videos and I realized that when I quit my job, I had more time to watch them. And so they dropped me into this high frequency user or something and my internet slowed down to nothing on my phone that you know it's just like real slow and so i'm gonna i'm going down today to get wi-fi because i got to because i got to 
It's so important for me to work on my mind, keep it positive, brainwash myself positive, brainwash myself positive. That's a nonstop thing. I mean, it's like as soon as I noticed that they, they slowed me down enough that I Googled and they said, yes, Sprint just started uh, dropping down the, you know, the speed on their heavy users. So I'm obviously a heavy user. So I'm, uh, but that just shows you, I, my TV is not, this is how important it is to me. My TV is not hooked up and I'm off the charts on Sprint's data. <laughs> I'm in their crappy customer mode, I guess. I don't know what it is, but I'm going to go down and get me some, uh, get me some uh, Wi-Fi today, today. Okay, just finished my workout for my first workout of the day, my morning. It was a 45 minute run walk. So <clears throat> I start out walking a mile, run a mile, walk a mile, run a mile. Uh, and I covered, I went a little, oh, I went a little extra credit, 3.75 miles. And I'm definitely hovering at that last 0. 0.75. I was, uh, I was averaging 948 a mile. And as I explained in an earlier video, once you start, once I start running nine minute mile pace, I'm like, that's real running. That's real running. That's not shuffling anymore. <laughs> or even worse, when I first started waddling. First in the beginning, it was like waddling. <laughs> When I was 237, it's like, wow, that guy just waddled right by me. <laughs> Actually, I didn't pass anybody. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so I'm feeling really good about that. And the park was in good shape. You know, at least down down low where, you know, I probably, you know, 80% of my runs are usually down low. You know, within, a, you know, an hour up and an hour back, it's going to be 80% of my training. And so I'm really happy with that, that the... Uh, that the uh, lower part of the park was not was not affected at this point and i think it's like done it's supposedly the fire is supposed to end it's projected for friday today's wednesday it's projected to be end friday and it's supposed to rain tomorrow like i think it'll end tomorrow if it rains tomorrow it'll be over thank god we've had enough uh we've had a long enough fire this is this fire this fire was uh, covered enough ground and did enough damage, and uh, it, it's we we get a 20-year break after this. <laughs> That's the rule. That's the rule. That's the rule. And so yeah, this fire it'll be good to see this fire season end when it starts raining. I assume that will be the end of it since we're getting into our rainy season now. I'm not sure if you guys could see that or not, but the whole overpass is uh, full of thank you signs to the firefighters. It's like, it's a big deal that we got, we're getting this thing stopped finally. It was a, this is huge. I, I guess my daughter said it's the biggest wildfire ever in California history, at least since they've been tracking. <laughs> Wow, anyway, we're, yeah, they're just, everybody's really grateful to the firefighters for what they've done, stopping this thing and saving tons of lives and stuff. So I gotta tell you something funny. My nephew, who inspired me to, to uh, start doing this vlogging, he explained to me exactly what vlogging is because I was mixing it up with podcasts. And I thought, wow, that's a really good fit with me and my message I'm trying to get across to get people to go after their dreams and goals. And he said to me, he goes, he goes, Uncle Bill, would you take the X calendar? If, if the fire hits you, because the fire was like forecast for, you know, like I mentioned, 65 mile an hour winds one night and everybody was leaving. And uh, and he asked me, he says, what, would you grab the calendar? Would you grab the chain calendar, the X calendar when you ran, if the fire came down and I thought about it? And I said, hell yeah, would I grab the calendar? I grab Furley B on calendar under one arm, Furley B on the other, the power of the chain. I was gonna save the calendar, but it ain't happening. Thank goodness, so it stays on the wall. The power of the chain though. All right, about two and a half miles. Feeling good My after my second workout. Uh, gonna do four miles. I think I'm averaging about 1530 a mile, which is good. Cause I'm a little tired, so I'm starting to lock that that muscle memory in. And I'm excited because tonight I'm going to uh, candlelit yoga. <laughs> 
That just sounds mellow. I think they're turning into me a really mellow, oming type guy. I like it though. Okay, just finished my uh, four mile walk. 101.16, including if you look at that closely, a 14.41 on the last mile. I'm dipping below 15 now, feeling good. My prediction is I'm gonna be able to do these one hour and less uh, walks or run walks and hit 12 minute miles by the time I go to Scobia in two months. But 12 minutes and change, you know I like that change part. <laughs> there it is again. All right, great workout, pumped up. Oh. Somebody just got their hair cut. <laughs> Looking extra cute, Furly B. Such a good boy, such a good boy. Good boy. Check this out. So this is the one I'm going to tonight. Candlelit Yin Yoga. I took a shower after my last workout because I don't want to go to Candlelit Yin Yoga stinky. <laughs> those mellow classes with those really deep stretches. I really like those. They're really good for me. We did the pigeon pose again. Remember, I think I told you the last time they let me do it kind of wrong. This time it was like, oh, everybody do the pigeon pose. And Bradley, you do it on your back because you're not even close to getting into it again. She told me I could stretch my hips in that, uh, in the position she told me to do on my back, which was, you know, because I couldn't do the pigeon pose. She said, you could do that all day long. So all I see is that's potential, man. If I can get my hips stretchier like and be able to get into that legit pigeon pose that should make me a lot faster and mellower <laughs> all right let's take a look at this 1570 calories feeling pretty good about life sticking to the plan got in three workouts again today yes i even count yin yoga yin candlelight yoga there really wasn't candlelight but they do dim the lights a lot and i didn't fall asleep I do count that as a workout though, so that was three. And the main thing was under 1800 calories, so I keep the chain alive. And my nephew asked me, if the fire came, would I come running with this chart? You damn right I would. <laughs> this chart would be flapping in the wind, running it, I'd have Furley under the other arm and hauling ass down the street. <laughs> But it doesn't look like we have to worry about that. We got this thing under control now and it's supposed to rain tomorrow. That'd be pretty awesome. Thanks.